Okay, this is the first of two 45 minute videos on note taking for um, why some teachers choose to make decisions that facilitate technology integration in their courses and why some teachers choose to not. Uh, so, first thing I'm going to do is get some notes. Alright. <coughs> Before I actually investigate that, it makes sense to look up what is technology integration in the classroom. So I'll use Edutopia. I've used this before. It's a pretty reliable site, in my opinion. Okay, right off the bat here, it says exactly what it is. considers successful to be when it's routine and transparent, accessible and readily available for the task at hand, supports the goals and helps students effectively reach their goals. So um, let's do this. It's an Achieved when I am a little OCD with my note taking. And let's get the source for reference. So this first paragraph, <coughs> excuse me, uh, this first paragraph uh, talks about how it should be seamless. Um, a variety of technology use uh, by seamless referring to to the point where it's almost second nature. And it does make a good point to say in one way or another uh, the technology um, <coughs> the technology is not just use by the teacher, i.e. whiteboard, computer only, but is used by both the teacher and the students. Um, come down here off the top of my head. I, I see, <coughs> excuse me, I see a few things. Um, benefits and immediately be uh, this helps students um, learn in the modern era of technology it 
is teaching students in a world they are more familiar, comfortable with. Drawbacks I immediately see is money. I uh, think of money as an immediate drawback uh, because I'm thinking about my own school right now. You know, I got, we have about 2,000 students, give or take 50. It changes from year to year. But uh, think about, you know, what if what if every student had their laptop? Two thousand students times, let's say we can, you know, a big business will give uh, laptops. Obviously, I don't want to say cheap. I'd say basic style laptops. Um, that can do things like Word, Excel, Internet, all of your main office business type stuff. Uh, obviously not the intense processors and video cards that you would use for uh, gaming or TV shows or whatnot. So let's say for bulk, for the sake of argument, $200. Um, and I think that's pretty... Uh, um, That would be a pretty good deal um, for a school. So you're talking four hundred thousand dollars to start the program, and then assume you get five hundred freshmen a year. and two hundred dollars a computer will be a hundred thousand dollars on new computers each year a few things to note about that though is you may only need to upgrade old computers however eventually all computers will need to be replaced. It just happens over time. Um, the computer itself just, yeah. I gotta pause for a minute. Okay, I'm back. Um, So I left off saying that eventually all computers you're going to need to replace them. Uh, it just happens over time. So that's my own to start. Let's go back to the website and see what they have. Ooh, that's a big one right there. Willingness to embrace change is also a major requirement for success. Technology integration. Um, Teachers need to be willing to accept, to learn, implement the new technology to the classroom. Okay. Um, this, I, I see this going both ways, access to up-to-date primary resource material. Um, <coughs> my thoughts on this are, 
and actually I rarely use the textbook in my own classroom. Um, but what I have sort of found teaching physics is um, the material doesn't change. I mean, linear motion today is the same as linear motion was, you know, 200 years ago. Um, you can present it in different ways. You can uh, use different problems, but you know, ultimately, it, it, it's the same stuff. So I see this as both uh, as both the benefit and also to something that doesn't really make that much of a difference. Um, a benefit because. I know you're using more up-to-date material, a lot of which can actually be free. Um, but at the same time, in some cases, it's really not necessary. So it's a nice benefit, but it's not that big of a benefit. Uh, a lot of this goes on in this section here to talk about what I had talked about in my own personal thoughts. Um, benefits of, you know, help students learn in the modern era, and it's something they're a little bit more comfortable with because it's something they're a little bit more uh, used to. Let's go back here different types okay we gotta do this Still going, we're still good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go away, no one cares. Alright, I left off here. Okay. Um <coughs> excuse me. Uh, blended learning, I'm familiar with this. Uh, I talked about this in previous courses. I actually do blended learning now. Um, my students use Blackboard and WebAssign. Um, Blackboard, there's videos posted and quizzes for them to take on it. Um, also makes a lot of material accessible to them without having to make a thousand copies of everything. game based learning okay and game based learning I see is beneficial to have done similar things to that um, There's a hot button topic. Benefits. Easy access to information. You can save the school money. 
students can take more control of their learning drawbacks that I know personally it's very difficult to monitor this type of learning students are easily distracted uh, what do you do if students are constantly off task I gotta pause for one more moment. Okay, I'm back again. Alright. Podcast, video, slideshows, clip, tools. Oh, this previous material I skipped through because I'm pretty familiar with it. I'd say this right here is where the majority of my school falls. classrooms are here. A lot of our students don't even know how to create spreadsheets in Excel. And I actually think it's because of cuts to extracurricular activities, those types of um, classes have been cut. Comfortable, I'd say I'm a blend between two and three. Yeah, four, not quite. to well the main question is why do some teachers choose to facilitate it and others do not so we'll stick with that although these do look like good articles maybe I'll come back to them all right <coughs> I think why they choose to do it is kind of easy um, but let's hit that first well, you know, I need to change my mind. Talked about some problems, I want some solutions before I go on. So I talked about earlier, barriers, lack of support, that's a good one. Um,
There I go. I'm a little political here. Issue with this is many unions. So, in my district alone, um, we had a 2% raise that was supposed to happen this year, and uh, everyone's supposed to step up, who could step up, uh, there's a top bracket for us. Uh, instead, um, our 2% raise was cut, and then... We were pay frozen for three years, so no steps for three years. Um, the unions, it would be great for them to advocate for money to be spent on technology. But I mean, with the current state of the economy and the way things are going, um, I think their main focus is on salaries, benefits, and so on and so forth. Um, which is unfortunate because that, you know, obviously, I mean, like the technology would be good for the kids, but at the same time, I mean, you got to keep quality teachers in the profession and you got to draw other potential candidates to the profession. If you don't um, offer a decent financial incentive to be a teacher, a lot less people want to do it and some will actually leave. Alright, so back to ways to implement this with lack of money and support. Implement tools we already have. Good point. Um, okay, so my first look at this step one. It's good thinking. Um, if you can get away with what you have, that's great. It seems like this particular teacher um, they're talking about here uh, that's using algebra for the phone plans. Um, she actually had access to a fair amount of technology. Uh, if you don't have much, it's an issue. I, I do have laptops that I share, but I share it between with nine other teachers, so it becomes very difficult. Uh, you can imagine one day in two weeks.
Number two already looks promising. Okay, number two is good. Uh, there's a lot of free resources out there. In fact, uh, the majority of the courses in this program have been using free resources, which have um, shown that it's definitely possible. So let's put some notes down here. Deal one. Use. Already have a tier two. Uh, use free tools. Overcome fear of unknown. Um, request. So, uh, teachers could definitely try and learn how to do this on their own, but the problem is um, the extra time. It's very uh, difficult to convince teachers to do this on their own time uh, when a lot of them already feel they are overworked. Um, and it's very difficult too, especially since you know, we're talking about fears of the unknown. Um, let's remember, it's important to note that teachers who struggle to learn, use new tech, are, um, have been in the profession longer. Therefore, they're more likely to have families. Family life takes a lot of time. I lack of 
extra time. Newer teachers, it, it's easier. Um, but, you know, if you're 45 years old and you've been teaching for 20 years, and now someone's saying, hey, why don't you give up uh, some of your free time to learn how to use this technology and revamp a lot of what you've been doing for the past 20 years? Well, okay, if you give them professional development time for it, that's one thing, but if you're asking them to do it with their own extra time, it's very difficult. Um, not because they wouldn't necessarily want to, but, I mean, it's difficult when they say, well, I can't stay Tuesday after school to work on this because I have to go pick up the kid from daycare and then I gotta go take another kid to this practice and then I gotta come home and, you know, uh, do a little laundry, get dinner going, all that fun stuff. So, it, it, and it's not necessarily that they wouldn't want to or wouldn't be willing to give up extra time. It's that they literally don't have it. Fourth, start small. Um, important to be successful early on. Good motivator. Um, takes away some anxiety that teachers may have can quickly show teachers how effective it can be. And last one. Okay. Five, learn with the students. Um, ultimately, work with what you what you've got. Unsuccessful. Let others see the evidence. Okay. Uh, okay. Hmm. Let's come back here really quick. Let's actually see if I 
Celsius. Elementary school. I do high school. Stratford. the school's website. What's this? Uh, 2009's a little late, or old, but... Yeah, 45 minutes. We gotta be careful. Alright, 8 minutes. This article isn't I'm gonna see if I can find something else. This is about, um, doesn't say what tech integration is, it's just about, uh, benefits of it. Let's back up. Let's just go with the classic here. Okay, it's just a repeat of what I've already saw and heard. Let's just try this. Well. Hmm. Okay. Let's see this. Well, 
with technology integration. Yeah, I already got that. Let's define what it is. Okay, so, and this goes on to say just what is it, which is what I was looking for. I'll take this reference. Uh, watch my time. Technology integration is using technology. Um, is mixing the technology in with the curriculum. It is not using this cookie cutter programs to do learning. So for example, it's not like, well, okay, for reading, we're going to read off the computer. It's not technology integration. It's using the computer to help with learning something. So in an English class, to uh, use the technology in order to um, learn more about the story or help students understand the story. It's not just reading off the computer. Okay. Well, I'm at 43 and a half minutes, so I am going to stop for this first video, and I will do the second one tomorrow, where I will uh, focus on, now that I know what technology integration is, I'm going to focus on why some teachers choose to use it and some choose not to.